You are about to listen to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening to us at MaximumThreshold.net. Horns up, fists in the air. Maximum Threshold, you are on the air. Oh, God. So soon? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Tony Arnell here. Hey, Tony, hey. what's going on, man? How you guys doing? Oh, great. Well, hey, Tony, I'm David. Dominic's the main host. He's the one we've been talking to. And then we got Michael behind us. I have one quick question for you, then I'll get out of your hair. Then the other two idiots will take over. <laughs> okay. Any relation to Joe Harnell? <laughs> no. That's really funny. Um, Why? He's a I famous didn't composer. Know who he was until recently, but the answer is no. Oh, damn. I always liked his work. <laughs> I haven't heard much of him, but I've heard good things. Oh, you know who he is? He did the the, the Lonely Man song from the, the Incredible Hawk series. Remember the the Bruce Banner be walking along the freeway with his thumb out? You know, all it sad. Goes, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. What year was that? <laughs> I have no clue what the hell you were talking about. 1977? At the end of the Incredible Hulk? Yeah. I think uh, you, you're, dude, I... <laughs> I know. I think he does voiceovers, doesn't he? Isn't that no, like one he, of the he's things? A composer. He's really, really good at that. I think voiceovers. That's what I've heard about him. He's dead. But I know composer. he's got a great voice. He had some. Pro- didn't he have a, a cover project or something where they? I take, heard he, uh, I heard he was into Blumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> While he's listening to no, Devo. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so, anyways, how are you this evening? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. A little tired. We had a uh, Ron and I had a gig last night, and uh, very successful gig here in New York City. And um, where'd you play? And you called the Cutting Room, which uh, it, it's actually been in New York for a long time. But they closed the old one down, and they spent a couple million dollars renovating a new space. And uh, it's it's probably the most beautiful venue for music Mm -hmm. in all of new york Um, i was super honored to play there i just got lucky and one of the owners happens to be a fan of mine and uh so anyway we jammed the place last night it was totally packed and a beautiful audience and really fun great show i think we played for two hours and 15 minutes or something it was supposed to be about an hour and 15 minutes and um, holy crap that's a long once you get once you get uh ron going uh, it just it just goes on and on because oh, we yeah. both know so many songs from the same era. So you know he's like a human jukebox. So once we kind of got done with our set, or in in the middle of the set, even it's like, oh, what song should we do? And he just starts playing random stuff, and we're off and running. You know, <laughs> I got a quick question. Um, can you tell us yeah. a little bit about douche, doucheonomics? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, that? Is there a video of that out there? No. <laughs> and also. If two douches cancel each other out, yeah, or if they become a double douche. Well, actually, I, I like to go with his analogy or his or his philosophy that I think two douches cancel each other out and become a good a good guy. <laughs> That's maybe a better idea. But who knows? You didn't play any Guns N' Roses when you're doing those requests, did you? <laughs> um, we, we actually have this really cool um, medley that we, we sort of stumbled upon in uh, Las Vegas when I went out there. During their residency, we um, we got a gig. Uh, there's a club inside the um, Hard Rock, a smaller ven- venue that holds about, I don't know, five or 600 people. And I got us a gig there, and... Um, Actually, a really nice lady that I know in L.A. helped us get a gig there on the one Friday night that they happened to be off during the entire run that they had. So I flew out for that and stayed and saw a few shows of theirs. Um, So we're rehearsing in my room, and uh, we're going through uh, More Than a Feeling by Boston, which I play sometimes at some of my shows acoustically. And he just stumbled upon it and said, you know, this isn't the same key as, as Sweet Child. And we just found this place to kind of merge the two songs together. So we have this little cool medley that I think it's probably a YouTube clip of it somewhere. They of us ca- going from uh, from that, from the two songs together. They call those really mashups cool. nowadays. A lot of people are doing those mashups. Two songs that yeah, are... Yeah, we do a lot of mashups. Even ones we don't intend to do. We actually mash, <laughs> literally mash things up. So, so you're gonna, <laughs> we're going to hear 10,000 lovers and everyone's a star. 
<laughs> oh come on! I I was no, like no, all no, excited. No, I was I'm listening kidding, to him. I, I I didn't think he'd play something obscure. Not yet, anyway. I thought he was gonna do relax. Don't do it. Yeah. Along with <laughs> <laughs> something from Chicago or something. <laughs> Dude, Chicago, I like, the band. I like yes. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. They're a little favorite, before my yeah. era, to be honest. Whatever. D- yeah. Dave, <laughs> D- Dave doesn't. Dave doesn't like Led Zeppelin because they degrade women. He yeah, brings up bacon. I Wait read the second. damn book, and uh, it was shocking as a kid. As a kid. Who, you, you think they were the only band that did that? <laughs> exactly. It's no one that wrote a book about it. You don't think your beloved Justin Bieber didn't fucking finger <laughs> Selena Gomez's brown eye? <laughs> wow. With a bacon wrapped wow. around his This finger. is internet radio, absolutely. <laughs> yes, <sure>. it is. <laughs> yeah, the... That's a lovely thought. Thanks for planning that <laughs> in my head. You got the Bieber fever. It's okay. <laughs> wow. <sighs> Man, so where where's this headed? Are you are you actually playing a song now, or are we? Uh... Oh, we're just gonna keep rolling. I'll play music in the background. Oh, good. And all that. Oh, cool. Yeah, what song? Do you have a song of yours you want us to play? It doesn't care what he wants. I want to hear Ten Thousand Lovers in One." <laughs> Who well, cares if guys, it's his interview? You know you're gonna get to that anyway, so you might as well get get to it now. Either that, or I'm gonna uh, request the loudness song. <laughs> oh, loud! <laughs> Roudness, excuse me, I said it wrong. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> there you go, there's your 10,000 lovers. <laughs> you know how you're listed as rocked classic top 100 bands? That's how it's listed. Oh, where is in 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 uh, that must be in in a list called most ob- obscure bands in the world or something? Is no, that, it's on, yeah, it's right up there with the priest. No, it's Dangerous Groove, Toys is close behind Dang, you. Groove Dang. Shark, GrooveShark.com. Uh, oh, is that the is that the website? Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that list you as TNT Rocks Classics Top 100 Bands. So we're going to start where out. Where do we where do we where do we lie on that? It doesn't that it doesn't website. tell me where. It just I don't know the website. I don't know it either. It's, That's just where we pulled the music from. So let's start out with oh, the I softball see. questions. Why would you quit TNT? Uh, you want all to give you the fat the well the real the real version will probably come out at some point when I end up getting to the book. But um, yeah, we'll be dead by then. So just tell us. <laughs> The easy version is, is you know, probably too cliche for you guys, but <laughs> it's the truth, really, um, mm. without getting into gory details. But, you know, sometimes people, um, you know, it's a four-way marriage, and uh, you just sometimes get to a point where you, we actually, you know, what was great, though, is that we got back together in 2002, and we had a great run in Europe, and we did a really, I mean, we had three or four Especially the first two years we were back together were, were really fun. Uh, we did uh, a really good Greatest Hits album. We did a couple of really good tours. Um, we had another gold record as recently as uh, 2004, which is pretty cool. And um, and then we uh, and then we released what I think is our best album, My Religion, in uh, 2004. And we played Sweden Rock with Priest, and we played uh, with Europe. Uh, in Spain for 10,000 people, and we did Germany, and we did um, a ton of sold-out shows on our own. So we had a really, really good run there, and we went into the second follow-up record to that. And <laughs> it just seems like, you know, for whatever reason, we couldn't we couldn't keep the uh, couldn't keep the spark alive for, uh, mm-hmm. for for that extended amount of time. And I just kind of looked around and I said, you know, we're all just we're just so different, and it's not. You got to imagine also, you know, I was doing most of the traveling. So for me to travel, to do everything, you know, to, to, to write, to record, to, uh, to do anything with the band, I had to leave home, and um, they didn't. So it started to get old, and, and to be quite honest, um, if I had lived there, I think we could have gone on to continue building what we, what we started building again in the 2000s and probably ended up uh, with a, a real good stable career over there but so, being that i'm american it was just um the 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 payoff was not worth the um the stress on my body and the stress on my mind uh dealing with people that were just so different from myself and uh 
the lack of income. So there's no truth to the, the rumor that you were planning on quitting to join Man of War because you wanted to wear a loincloth? <laughs> and that caused friction and TNT? Is that the best you can do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, he says brilliant Devo questions. Um, yeah, no. I think I can think, I, I could think of much, much stranger uh, things. Oh, good. Then I have a question yeah. for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dave wants to know if you wanted him to text no. you pictures of his dong. <laughs> Because wow. he's into that kind of stuff. No, out of, wow. out of out of all the bands you've been in and all the musicians yeah. you played with, okay, yeah. yeah, who is the most likely that you'd walk in on them with a tranny? Wait, wait a second. <laughs> I got to hear that again. So I can all right, out of all the musicians you've worked with and all the bands you've yeah. been in, who is the most yeah. likely for you to walk in on them with a tranny? For me to walk in on. Be- them with a, a, a with a tree. Yeah. Um that's it. That's it. I probably I can I'm my immediately somebody comes to mind but I really <laughs> don't it since we're on the internet and everyone can hear this I'd pretty much rather just No one's listening to worry about it. You got to hear Jason Newstead do it. made silent on that one cuz I <laughs> still know the person. You should have heard Jason Newstead. Jason Newstead sold out Lars Ulrich. <laughs> Oh yeah! Everybody wow. sells out the drummer. It's well, it's you know. Let's just put it this way: it is the drummer. <laughs> I won't say which one, but it is it is a drummer. <laughs> nice. So well, I guess there is something about drummers then. Well, I, see, Dave ruined the question. It's supposed to be a a post a post op passable tranny, dude. Like honestly, I like my oh, question God. better. I don't know if you know, I, I don't know if you're married, single, whatever. I am married, yes, for for almost ten years. Yeah. Oh, congratulations! But Thanks. if you were single, man, yeah. about the town, so to speak. Yeah. And you met like no, I look for. I I know where you're going. No, I I'm I am a. <laughs> I live in New York, dude. I've been here for thirty years. I was I grew up in San Diego, surfing and skating, and I I came here when I was sixteen, almost seventeen, and I got grooved into the I went from the beach to the uh, streets of New York and I got grooved in very quickly to the underbelly (laughs) of society and uh, you know I mean I can spot an Adam's apple from blocks away (laughs) what about what about a thin little Asian lady boy (laughs) boy. with with no Adam's apple and tiny little hands and little feet like I'm talking like the best looking woman you've ever seen I can spot what I call man face or man hands so you have gaydar is what you're saying from miles away I have I have very good uh, detector detection for that you know i used to get my hair cut in new york at this really great place where the only actual female that worked there cut my hair and the rest of all the hair cutters were transsexuals they were really nice people and um Shims. but it was an education because i'd have to sit there for however long i'd have to sit there and you know they'd come in and out and you know flirt and Mm-hmm. talk Sounds and uh, I saw some that were pretty passable I gotta say there was one day in particular that one walked in and I thought okay this is is possibly the one that is actually a woman you know <laughs> uh, tall beautiful blonde no Adam no, no sign of anything and then she spoke he she spoke and the, 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 the deep boy the deep boys came out I uh, thought, more importantly damn. how was the blow job <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i didn't get that far sorry it's so, okay so so by haircut did you mean you were there getting a blumpkin uh no no he, blumpkin. he's obsessed I don't even know with what blumpkins. that is but i didn't get one i want to ask you a couple of musical questions if you don't mind we gearing it towards that'd that be, that'd be nice so, yeah. oh, why would we do that <laughs> Well, as a uh, New yeah, Yorker, why, as why, why, I consider a native New Yorker, some of my favorite uh, bands and artists are from New York City, and some of them still like live and reside around there. So, uh, are you friends, yeah. or do you know uh, Vinny a piece? No, I don't. You know, I mean that's Wait, the thing. It's I, Vinny I, came, I say that again. He's it's oh, Vinny you're about the, name of the pronunciation of the last name now. It's um, um, Carmine a piece you know, and I came, Vinny I, I said, When I when I came here, I was. Uh, it was actually actually an interesting time because it was 1979. My mother was already here. She was she was an opera singer, 
And mm-hmm. I had traveled um, a lot when I was a kid. We traveled all over California, which was where I grew up. And, and we even lived in Belgium for a short period of time. And uh, a lot of traveling. And at some point, when I was probably about 15 or so, she, she and her, my then stepfather, moved to New York to, uh, my mother was really, really good. So they, um, I believe she was singing with the New York City Opera or something like that. So I stayed back in California and finished high school early. I was done by the time I was 16, and then I came out. So I brought with me, uh, when I was out there, I, I had my first car in California. I was totally into surfing and skateboarding. I was actually a professional skateboarder in, in the mid-'70s when, uh, when the whole skateboarding thing exploded with Tony Alva and all those guys. And my dad was a photographer. And... Uh, he was sk- he was a big skateboard photographer because of me getting into the sport. So anyhow, I brought all this music with me that nobody in New- none of my buddies in New York that I ended up hanging out with had heard of. And I brought Priest with me, and I brought Van Halen with me, and I- and all this really cool stuff that I had got just basically gotten into in the past year or so out in California. Um, so a great story. I have my car out there, and I'm driving. Uh, I'm driving down the street in Queens, in you know, just a total urban situation with my surfboard in the back, you know. And I'm, I've got the windows rolled down. It's summertime, and I've got an eight-track player in my car, and I'm blasting, probably Priest, and I'm screaming in the car with the windows down. And uh, I, I was I'm driving through the neighborhood doing this for weeks after mm-hmm. I moved there. One day I come to a stop sign, and these guys, you know, or these guys look like they're going to kill me. The, the long hair, you know, in the whole nine yards, look like rockers, kind of. And I'm like, dude, stop, stop. Well, they didn't say dude because they're in New York, so it's probably, like, yo, stop, stop. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, what, what, fuck? And I'm trying to, like, start the car, you know, and get away. And they come running over, and they go, no, 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 no. Are you the guy that's been singing in the neighborhood? And I go, what do you mean singing? Like driving? Like we've heard this voice, like right, you know, around the neighborhood. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And they're like, we have a band. Can you come and like you know jam with us and come to our rehearsal? And I had never been in a band before. I was like, um, yeah, okay, I guess so. So I had just started college. I was 17 years old. I had a scholarship for photography. And uh, that was the beginning, and I, these were my buds, and they were the first musicians I started hanging out with, and they never heard of any of these bands, and I started playing them Judas Priest and Van Halen. All they knew was Led Zeppelin and, you know, all the classic, uh, you know, 70s stuff. And um, so it was quite an experience, and, and that, in that first six months, I, I went from going to be a photographer to getting bit by the music bug and i went from you know joining this band to leaving them and outgrowing them and just kind of you know that was the end of it that was uh, when i made my decision so as far as new york bands i totally went off on your question but uh i come from california so my bands were van halen because they were born you know that they were on the radio when i was a kid out there in high school um you know, all all my bands were the California bands, the Eagles and and Van Halen and uh, whatever was on the radio out there. So, know? so when you moved, you moved to New York City about 1979, right? Yeah, yeah. So that Somewhere was like, isn't that like when I, the movie? I saw the biggest cockroach I'd ever seen yeah. in my life. Isn't that like when the movie <laughs> the War- Isn't that like when the movie the Warriors came out and you're like, damn, I want to move to this city? <laughs> well, I mean, the resistance that I had for you know, you have to understand, I was. I went from being a pro skateboarder to, you know, I had surfed most of my life, and then that was going to be the thing I was going to pursue next. So I was surfing every morning and then going to my job that I hated. I was working at some deli in a mall in San Diego, and I was up every morning at 5 a.m. and surfing and then going to this job I hated. And uh, so, you know, when I told my, I was living with my grandparents out there, and when I told them, they, they gave me the choice. You can either go to San Diego State University, or you can, because uh, I'd finished high school, or you can go to uh, live with your mom in New York. And I was like, oh, but Diego's I'm going to Hawaii. Country. I'm going to go to Hawaii, and I'm going to be a pro surfer. <laughs> and so they weren't having that. So uh, so I got shipped to New York, and um, and and that's kind of when my life changed, you know. That's cool. That's cool. So, what are you up to now? What what are, what can we promote for you? What can we help you out with? What can you help me? Out? <laughs> um, well, 
I mean, there's a no, lot. No, I'm not I've sending you. I'm not sending that you a lot money. Of people don't know about. So for people yeah. who, what I what I've been sort of discovering <clears throat> over the last really ten plus years is, uh, first of all, I've never really stopped. You know, I I I had little breaks here and there throughout the '90s. I had you know one break that lasted maybe two years, and another break that was maybe another year or two. Um, but I never really stopped recording music and, and releasing albums. And uh, most of the big, you know, people who were TNT fans, because obviously TNT sold however many, you know, probably a couple million records, uh, for the, you know, across the whole career, um, kind of lost track, you know, when, uh, when the whole 80s movement died. And I've continued, and most of my fans that have stayed with me and followed me, uh, I continue to make music. I've continued to, to what I think is grow, uh, evolve, and um, take what I did and just sort of add to it, and uh, you know, not not really stay stagnant musically or um, as a person. So there's a lot of music for anybody who has lost track or stopped listening. Uh, let's say in '89 or '92 or whatever. Um, there's a ton of stuff to catch up on. There, there must be 20, there must be at least 15 to 20 records um, between the early 90s mm -hmm. and today. You know, Tony, I've always, uh, I've always considered you one of the one of the greatest rock and, and you know hard rock and metal singers that's out there. And even till this day, you know, listen to some of your newer stuff that you've had out. I mean, you still got the pipes, man. You still are still really, really good, man. So I just want to give you props Thank on that. Thank you. Well, you know, like I said, my mom was an opera singer, and I, I have a pretty good, um, you know, I, I went through a period of time, like a lot of people do, where I took my voice for granted and yeah. had some couple little stints of smoking cigarettes. You know, it didn't last for a long time, but I had like a maybe a two- or three-year period in my, my late teens, early 20s, and then I, um, I quit for a long time, and I sort of became sort of a social smoker and mm -hmm. you know I drank too much and I did some bad things in the 80s like we all did mm -hmm. and so on so mm -hmm. on but I think probably um, you know for the last 15 years or so I've been I've been taking really good care of myself and, and trying to uh, just stay healthy and I think keeping as a singer you know keeping a healthy body will help keep the voice healthy and I had a really really good vocal coach um, I was very lucky that my mother found this guy in New York, and I started with him when I was 18. So I was already, you know, I felt like a, a pretty good natural singer, and I was already working in bands when I was 17. I was in a pretty busy band, uh, working four nights, four or five nights a week. And uh, and then I started studying with this guy who's now, like, the guy in New York. I mean, there's nobody who's more successful as a vocal coach than, than this guy, and he was, like, pretty much really nobody when I started going to him and now he's got like you name you name a, a, a big singer like the hugest in the world and, and he's their vocal coach I'm talking about Bono uh, Lady Gaga Christina Aguilera um, Mick Jagger I mean the list just goes on and on and on and when I was with him he had you know just mostly unsigned singers I think his biggest singer might have been Jolyn Turner and I think he got him as by default from his dad who was a vocal coach. And um, so when my band got signed, I was like his first, you know, the, my gold records were his his first that he put up on his wall in his studio. So um, now you go into his studio and it's like, you know, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I take good care of my voice and I, I, you know, I try to do my best. I don't sing perfect. You know, it's, it's a cool metamorphosis though because I've come to a point where, you know, the 80s, the, the benchmark for a good concert was you'd walk away and you'd say, um, you'd, hear, you, you'd hear people say, oh, they were amazing. They sounded just like the record. Okay. And what I, what I think, where I differ from a lot of 80s fans and 80s artists, is when the whole grunge thing happened, it didn't really bum me out. Yeah, it killed, you know, killed off. It, it, it quote, killed everyone's career, whatever. But... You know what? I, I had the dis I had a choice to go to Japan like everybody else and make a fortune over there, like Ingbe did, and a lot of other bands just kind of transferred the the um, you know the success over to countries that were you know it was just catching on. 
uh, and we were huge in Japan, so it would have been an easy thing for me to do is just kind of, you know, focus my attention there. But instead, I kind of really got drawn to、um, the change. Yeah, why would you and, want to make、um, money? The thing that was really cool for me was the fact that a guy like Chris Cornell, for example, just to name one, the singer came out. I was like, whoa, this guy is amazing. Because, you know, yeah, I, like, I liked some of the 80s guys, but, you know, admittedly, Because we were an 80s band, I wasn't really, by, by the time, by the late 80s, I wasn't really listening or I didn't really own a lot of albums from other 80s bands that were similar to us. Yeah, but. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to any of them. I knew them, I liked them. If I saw them in concert or hung out with them, you know, it was cool. But I wasn't like listening to、um, Bon Jovi or. You know, I, I didn't put, the, put that on the turntable. I was listening to Zeppelin or Aerosmith yeah, or you know, whatever I grew up with. Soundgarden、um, came out before 90, or、yeah. right at 90, before the whole grunge explosion thing. Right. And, yeah. Because they, they had I, like. But I mean, I, of course, didn't really hear about them until everybody else kind of did. And,、uh, but I remember, the, I remember the day I heard、uh, the Nirvana single on the radio, and I was just like, what? Is this, you know, and I did not have an instant hatred for it. I was actually really intrigued by the whole thing. And, you know, so, so anyway, just to get to the point of what I was saying, as a singer, what I think that whole movement did for me is it sort of、um, it really generated、uh, almost a rebirth in what could be done, what I could do, where I could go with my lyrics, how honest I could be. Uh, I remember hearing Alanis Morissette's record for the first time and, and just being totally blown away that you could go that deep into honesty in lyrics. And,、uh, and it took me down that path, and I just started to basically write my life. And that's when my lyrics really took a huge change. And I think、um, for anybody who's you know, really followed what I've done, when I hit the、uh, Firefly record with TNT, which、mm-hmm. was a. Very controversial record for us.、Um, that one and the one that followed, Transistor.、Um, that's where my, my lyrics really started to take、uh, a pretty dramatic turn and then followed from there into the Westworld material and,、uh, and, and the new TNT material and then the Starbreaker material and all that stuff and, and the solo stuff. So、um, right. well, it was really great for me. And, and as a singer, I would hear Cornell. People like Cornell, who I happen to think the world of,、um, sing beautifully on one night and not so great on another night. And it didn't make me feel badly about him. It didn't make me feel like he lost his voice. I just looked at it and went, all right, so he's having a bad night. But in the 80s, if you had a bad night, the rumor was like, oh, he's done. He's shot. He can't sing live. Or there would all be all this, you know, this craziness. And it was so much pressure. And.、Um, It, was, it, it actually was really, really hard for me because I was so intent on pleasing the audience. You know, that I was the guy in the band that was, you know, in bed, nothing, no, no drinking, no nothing, you know, nothing at all. I'd be just like, okay, guys, see ya. You know, I'd be like <laughs> in the bunk or in the room or whatever it would be.、Um, And、uh, trying to make sure that I you know, did everything I could do to,、uh, to sing my heart out every night and, and sound my best. And,、uh, you know, it, it, looking back on it, it made no difference. I mean, I'm sure that not doing drugs and drinking made a difference, but, but the stress I put on myself probably made, made it worse on me than if you know, I was more relaxed about it. Gotcha. That was a long winded answer, but anyway, <laughs> you got a lot out of it.、So. Hey, hey, Tony, we're going we're to get going here. I actually got another interview here coming up. <laughs> you used I had up a, all your time. I had a question for you, though. Go ahead, throw it out there. Real quick, this is from a big fan, Jeff Kiss. He wants to know Do you drive to Hackensack to eat white mana hamburgers or are you a vegan twat? <laughs> wow.、Um, uh, I don't even know how to answer that question.、Um, but if he's a big fan.、Mm-hmm. And he had one, one question to ask. I would say, dude, you blew your, your question chance there. Well, he had a、that、whole bunch of、lame. questions, but your answers were a little long. Well, then I'll shorten them. 
we definitely got to get you back on here because because we you know we, you have a strong history, and I definitely will dedicate a, the longer segment uh, to you next time we can get you back on here. Is that cool? Absolutely, man. Yeah, we only had like a half hour to work with over here. But I'll just say this: I'm not a vegan twat, okay. and uh, <laughs> but I have but I have friends that are vegans, and I think they're awesome people, and I mm-hmm. respect anybody that that eats any particular way and. Uh, uh, if it works for them, great. More, Dominic, but, Dominic eats like a house. <laughs> more, more tasty meat for us carnivores. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Tony, can you do us a quick favor? Sure. Can you do a promo ID for us? Just say your name, your, your band that you're with, and say you're listening to Maximum Threshold and throw something crazy out at the end of it. Actually, i got to get a plug-in for my new project. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, that's what I, I Oh, that that's it. Yeah, and you know what? You never Did you ever say the websites or anything where we can find your music? i got to talk about that, and i got to briefly talk about um, what Ron and I are doing. Okay. Because that's really important. So uh, we are doing, um, we actually, I won't get into how we met and everything. I'll make it really quick. So we're, we, we're, we have an ongoing project right now uh, with Pledge Music. We've reached our goal nice. um, over a month ago, and now we're, um, we're still raising um, money for the project, but now it's gone into the phase where 20% of the uh, money that comes in is, is for my charity, which is for breast cancer. And it's not just any breast cancer charity. It's, it's, I did a lot of research on it because my mother passed away from it in, mm-hmm. in 2009. And, um, and so I may even up that percentage even more depending on how much money comes in. And I just want to tell people about it. So it's uh, Pledge Music uh, forward slash projects forward slash tony harnell and it's uh the band is called tony harnell and the wildflowers featuring bumblefoot it's an acoustic ep but it's not a sleepy cheesy acoustic record it's very cool it's got it's got elements of zeppelin it's dark it's different it kind of goes all of all different directions very very i'm really excited about it i think it's some of the most daring music i've done and Ron's come on board, and, and we're in the midst of writing. We were already working on it when he came on board, so uh, he and I are now finishing up the writing on it. We've done an incredible cover of Somebody to Love by Queen, which is, with an acoustic guitar, sounds pretty phenomenal. Um, anyway, so that's what we're doing. Uh, they can go to that website, they can pledge, and they can be a part of it. They get, you know, behind the scenes, they get see video, and they get kind of see the making of the EP, and all kinds of cool clips and stuff, which they won't be able to do if they wait until it's released sometime in probably March, or um, I'm going to guess March, it'll be, the digital will be out. So we're doing that. Um, of course, Ron has his, uh, his hot sauce line has been, uh, has been put out, and, uh, and he has given me, if I can just look at it really quick here, the uh, place where people can find that is called uh, kjohns.com that's c-a-j-o-h-n-s dot com and that's where they can find this hot sauce bumblefoot hot sauce and he's got all sorts of different things from bumblefucked all the way to uh, I don't know normal and all sorts of different crazy hot sauces and um, so there's that and so look for the EP and um, there's an album I put out in 2010 called Tony Harnell and the Mercury Train, which is reworkings of all my favorite songs I did with TNT, Westworld, Starbreaker, uh, done in totally different ways. Very, very cool record. And uh, there's, an, there's an obscure EP out that came out in 2007 that I'm very, very proud of as well, which is very hard to find, but people can look for that as well. Uh, my website, the best one is um, TonyHarnell.com is being uh, put together right now. So the best place is Reverb Nation forward slash Tony Harnell. Sounds good. And that's where you can just catch up with music. Sounds awesome, Tony. Can you do that promo ID for us? Promo ID, <laughs> absolutely. Go for it. Oh, what do you want me to say? I'll just say your name, the <laughs> band you're with, you're listening to Maximum Threshold, and throw something crazy out at the end of it. Okay. I'm, I'm not really with a band, I guess, at the moment. So, uh, I'll just, just sing it with yourself. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Tony Harnell, formerly of TNT, and you're listening to Maximum Threshold. Yeah. That'll <laughs> I got work. Nothing. I got nothing. I got That's nothing good. at the end of that one. That's cool. Would you say, say something crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like go find a tranny or something? Yeah. Well, we can clip that in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll clip that in there. <laughs> okay, Tony. Hey, I'm getting ready to play Take What You're Giving. I'll play that. 
after we're done talking uh, here. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's my single from 2011. And um, I wanted to, uh, yeah, you guys will probably do a lot of editing. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> really, I'm, with, yeah, I'm not going to really take anything well, We're out. live, aren't we? Yep. But you still record it, though. Well, I want to thank all the people out there, and I want to thank all my supporters for all the years. And if they've lost track, please catch up. And um, I appreciate the support greatly. And uh, if you have lost track and you got off the train, get back on board. And uh, I want to say one more thing. I want to say that my new collaboration with Ron has just been amazing. He's, he's probably the most amazing guitar player I've ever worked oh, yeah. with. And that's saying a lot, having worked with Ronnie Latigro and a few other amazing guitar mm-hmm. players. And I just want to give him big, big props. And we both we admire each other greatly. And uh, who knows what's going to come down the pike. But um, so far, so good. Sounds good, Tony. Thanks again, okay, man. guys. Thank you. And have yourself a good one. Thanks again for being on. No problem. Thanks. You're welcome. Good night. Bye. Bye. And there you Everyone's go. Everyone's a star. <laughs> and here's that song we're just talking about. We'll be back after this with Chachi. He's calling in. Got a little bit more than anyone could say You don't need everything you want But you still think you need it anyway And then you look straight in your eyes and into the mirror All the things you're feeling all the time And you're the only one you're thinking of And you feel fine As we are fleeting in our skin And it's all make-believe, you know The whole wide world is wild to blow And in one great big reality show we start You have just listened to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening and please visit us at MaximumThreshold.net.